So our next step will be to move these apart more so we can have enough room for a pencil or a pen. I did the math, I did the calculations for you guys. On average, a pen or pencil is about 0.35 inches in diameter. So between that, between 0.3 and 0.35, 0.37, something like that. So if we dimension using the anode, I'm going to change the dimension from linear into angle aligned. And I'm just going to dimension over here something to get a, get a feeling to what size I have. Right now I have 1.619 which is pretty big. So it's still too big. I'm going to have to scale this item down even more. So if you guys already scaled it, that's fine. You, you'll realize that we have to scale it again. So I'm going to have to go home. Let's scale it. And I'm going to scale it 50% size. 50 will be 0 0.8, 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Sorry, quarter of its size. So 0.25 is the scale. Leave it up there for a second. And I click enter. So we have a smaller. I'm going to go to the anode again. Dimension. Zoom in just to get a better snap. Oh, it's just not working now. That's right, which scale. Just grab something like that. And I got 0.83 for that opening, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it. There we go. 0.53. It's, I'd say, about pretty good because if I put a pen in there, it'll fit deep inside, hopefully, keeping it from falling out. So I can leave it as is. Now that's good for this one, but I have to look at the bottom one here because I want to put a pen in here too. And it's half an inch too, which is great. Here, maybe two, but actually, this might be too hard for a pen to, to fall in. Now, to give you guys an example what I mean, how I want pens to hold, it will be something like this. If I had a pencil or a pen, I would put it in here. So that's how a pen would fit in from both sides and bottom. 0.35 is what the pen size is, so if the hole is bigger than that, it's perfect. If it's too small, we have to scale it. Now, I scaled it at 0.25 down again to get a size that could hold a pen or pencil. So let me delete this. And once we have that, what we're going to be doing is extruding these items out, the logo especially. Then we'll work out with the text. We're going to extrude the, these out by at least here, two inches. So you can go into an isometric view using your view cube, or you can hold shift and your scroll button to so get into an isometric view to get a feeling of how much it's extruding out. There's two options for extruding. You can use extrude, you can type in ext, or you can use press pull. Extrude, you would just select the lines. You can select all of them at once, like so. And going downwards or upwards, up to you, two inches, which is pretty, pretty long. The other option would be press pull, but in this case, it might be not be as effective because, uh, because it's crashing my computer. So something you might not want to do. Surprise it crashed. So since my computer crashed on that one, I didn't want to press pull. I'm going to go back to extruding it, selecting all these parts of the logo, extruding it only two inches. Now this is going way too high, so I have an issue with my drawing. I have to check my scales again. So I go to annotate dimension. Yeah, it's a very small amount, 0.68. I don't know what happened here, but this is not what I want. I want point, point actually that's 0.68. I want 0.3. That should be fine. 0.58. I'm trying to do this extrusion again. 
Damn two. I guess I can keep it that way. Yours might be a little shorter. Mine's a little bit higher. That's fine. This is just practice. So our next important aspect that we need to do is create something that holds these three, four pieces together. Before I do that, go to view. I'll change it to conceptual to get a better visual of it. I can see that they're all separate pieces, and if they were ever made, they would just fall apart. We need something that connects them all together, so what we're going to design is a cylinder that's going to be right in the middle of the object. To do that, we need to first change our UCX. UCS. So, you can see right now, X and Y are right here. I want X and Y to be on the top, actually not, the on this side, on top of the head of this object. So, let me just put this. I select the Y, I make sure I have ortho on, and I make it face upwards. So now you can see the X and Y are facing in a different direction, which is this direction, which is the bottom, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. Here, I will draw a circle that we're going to make into a cylinder. I'm going to select circle. I'm going to just draw it anywhere in this area. The diameter is going to be about 0.25. So I'm going to select diameter, or you can type in D enter, and 0.25. A little bit big, but that's all right. You can always scale it down if you need to, if you think it's too big, because we don't want it bigger than the hat, the top piece, this head piece right here. So mine's a little bit bigger. I'll just scale it down a little bit. Get you guys to experience more about scaling. Select scale, center of the circle, to about that size, or 0.5, half the size. There we go. And I'm going to extrude it the height of this object. So I'm hoping, I can't, I should have just checked before I did this, but it's all right. I'm going to extrude this circle into a cylinder about. Let's see. Oh yeah, that was two inches. I went this way, so I'm guessing this is going to be about 0.25 maybe. Well, it's way too short. That's all right. I'll fix that later. First, what I want to do is move this object using the center of the circle to about the center of this circle, if I can, or the bottom. So, And I'm going to move it up a little bit. So you'll see that it's going to be about the center of this circle and actually, I'll make it perfect, because that's what we want to make. So I have something like this. The cylinder, it's a little too short. It should be going all the way down, because first, the cylinder is going to help to hold the, the item up together, and second, it's going to give it some support, base support. So you have to make sure that once we have this, we're going to extrude the face more. I'll show you how to do that next. Now let's say I have that cylinder and it's too short. An easy fix is to go to extrude faces. There's an extrude face command right here. You select that, you rotate so you can select the face you want to extrude, which is the bottom of the cylinder. You click enter. And you can specify a distance, like so. What's going on here? Extrude face. Oh, uh, you know what? I might have to use the extrude face here in the solid. Sometimes what you use in your home or your surface tab may be just a bit different from what the other one is. So if, if you're using extrude, it can be a little bit different. So what we're supposed to use, where is it? Extrude. Oh, that's not going to help me now. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if I can do this. Maybe that was the right way. Extrude. Move. Copy. Offset. You know, that's weird. Yeah. Okay, for some reason I couldn't select the object, so... Now 
Okay, now it's going to be okay. So extrude faces. You select the face. It should shade in. Click enter. And you can either specify the distance or you can draw a line. I prefer drawing a line in this point because that way I'll know exactly what height I want it to make. I want this height. Oh, I guess I want to pick more. It must have snapped to something else. But that's alright. It is a lot larger. And that's fine because I can always go back and extrude it back. Well, actually, I'm just going to extrude. Delayed, rotate, offset, move faces. You know what's not going to help me out with that? So, like any issues, there's always another way to solve it. So I'm going to, I have it extended out way too much, and I want to cut it right there to be e even with these two items. An easy way would be to go to that view, the top view of those, and I'm going to draw a line here. But I'm not just going to draw any line. I'm going to use a slice command and draw a line. So I'm going to slice, select the cylinder, I'm going to slice, enter, and using these endpoints as references, I'll draw a line across. The only issue now I just realized is I forgot to change my UCX. So now it won't work. So you got to make sure your UCX is facing the correct way before you draw any lines. So again, I rotate around, make sure my ortho is on. Go back to my top view. This time it's a little different, but it's okay. So again, slice, select the cylinder, use these lines as a reference, and it cuts it. I can delete one side and kick the other. And to finally accomplish our part here, I'm going to move that cylinder down to about the center. That will help us keep the whole item together once we union it for printing. But at this moment, we're not going to union it because once you do, it's almost impossible to undo it. So always keep that in mind.